Ahead tonight, the seventh summit of the Americas wraps up in Panama City today. And the assistant director of public prosecutions bid farewell. So don't go anywhere. The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Thanks so much for tuning in. Topping the news, the seventh Summit of the Americas held in Panama City is now history, and regional heads were able to discuss quite a number of issues with the United States President Barack Obama. The event was historic as a U.S. president and his Cuban counterpart met face-to-face -face in a cordial exchange, vowing to turn the page. This comes as the U.S. announced a new policy on Cuba late last year, which will lax restrictions and sanctions on that island nation. Oprah wrote reports tonight that President Obama was pleased with the meeting's outcome and anticipates solidifying his country's relationship with the Caribbean. I believe that our nations had to break free from the old arguments and the old grievances that had too often trapped us in the past. CARICOM Chairman, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie and other regional leaders welcoming that statement by U.S. President Barack Obama, who says he continues his chapter of engagement in the region, and a key part of that chapter is normalizing relations with Cuba. The point is the United States will not be imprisoned by the past. We're looking to the future and to policies that improve the lives of the Cuban people and advance the interests of cooperation in the hemisphere. The Summit of the Americas provided a forum for the first formal meeting of the two countries' leaders in more than half a century. While both have agreed to turn the page and develop new relationships, they admitted that there will be differences. We will continue to speak out on behalf of universal values that we think are important. I'm sure President Castro will continue to speak out on the issues he thinks are important. But I firmly believe that if we can continue to move forward and seize this momentum in pursuit of mutual interests, then better relations between the United States and Cuba will create new opportunities for cooperation across our region for the security and prosperity and health and dignity of all our people. And moving closer to home, the U.S. President called on all leaders to stand firm to protect the citizens of the region. We must continue to join with our partners across the region, especially in Central America, but also in the Caribbean, to promote uh, a, a, an approach, a holistic approach, uh, that applies rule of law, respects human rights, but also tackles the narco traffickers that devastate so many communities. Uh, this is a shared responsibility, and I've said before that the United States has a responsibility to reduce demand for drugs and to reduce the flow of weapons south, even as we partner with you to go after the networks that can cause so much violence. Now, the president of one of the world's largest economies has promised to lend assistance to regional countries, including the Bahamas, as best he can. In Panama City, at the Summit of the Americas, I'm Opal Roach, ZNS Network News. Prominent attorney Wayne Monroe says he is not satisfied with the fourth estate calling on journalists to be responsible in their reporting. Monroe advises that as a country, we've gotten away from our civility and fall prey to idle gossip instead of looking at the facts. It appears that everything has to be characterized as a scandal and the facts don't matter and the purpose is purely political mischief where you say there's a scandal. People are going to forget the facts. People aren't going to concern themselves with the facts. People are going to forget common sense. Thus far, nobody has been held account, accountable for it, and maybe it is time, and when I review the reporting of it, maybe it is time for persons to be held accountable um, for what is really 
defaming somebody's character. We wonder about young fellas shooting one another down. Well, character assassination is, is as bad and worse. Monroe says, unfortunately, he believes that journalists have a part in the spreading of misinformation. I don't personally view a lot of the journalism because I don't regard it as truly the fourth estate. When you don't investigate to find out, for instance, if you talk about somebody was arrested, you should at the very least have seen a detention record. As a journalist, you're supposed to take investigations. The journalist's responsibility is to investigate, and unfortunately, you're having very little of that in some quarters of the media today. Hundreds flocked to our key last night for the best in Bahamian music as an array of artists took center stage for the pre-carnival event. Find out from Asiaska Adderley if this was a party or what. Bahamian culture was on full display on our Key Saturday night as some of the country's top artists such as KB and Gino D performed just weeks before the highly anticipated first ever Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival is set to take place. The jam-packed concert spearheaded by the Ministry of Tourism is the first in a series of events designed to celebrate and embrace Bahamian culture. Well, this reminds me of Junkanoo doing this, man. We need to get back to this. We need to give Bahamian people some of their Bahamian music and let them know what they've been forgetting, man. It's a wonderful thing. Anything to promote our culture, to uplift our people in a positive way, I support. Um, this concert is just to prove what we got to offer and what we got to bring to the stage. Look at the people. I mean, look at the people. We are mass out here. Bahamas, we ready. Man, I feel great, man. You get the support like this from the Bahamian people. It shows us that they still love us, man. Bahamian music is getting up there, and every year it's getting better and better, and the people need to support more and more. Bahamian music I just took off now, and it's on the go now. It's on the move. You can't stop us. All we need to do now, the entertainers need to unite together and stand as one, and we got it. And while Bahamian music may be a hit locally, many believe it's time for the world to become a part of this phenomenon, beginning with the region. This is just a pure example of what can happen. There's like at least 10, 8 to 10,000 people out here right now. So when it comes to Bahamian cultures, the Bahamians are ready. There was a time I felt like we were having a nosedive, but that's no more. Everybody's ready now to see that the Bahamian artists go to the next level. We listen to everybody else's music, like the carnival and the reggae, and now we're getting the Caribbean to listen to our music. Because at Carifta, you have some 25 countries, and also you have the, the indigenous people, we have an event that's taking place. So for five solid days, our culture is exposed throughout the region. Based on the crowd and star-studded lineup of performers, organizer Steve McKinney believes last night's concert was a smashing success. Bahamians want Bahamian music. We have seen it all night. When the bell rang at 7 o'clock, we started on time, and the parking lot was already full. In the first hour, we had so many people there. I was like, when are we going to hold these people tonight? Tonight, the police estimated to me that there was about 35 to 5,000 people on the periphery of this place tonight. The people made this place dark with Bahamians. This is good. I feel like a champion. I think the Bahamian people are they going to get a peek. Yes, because it was that good. Siaska Adderley, ZNS Network News. Stay close. We've got more news right after this quick break.